My dearly beloved in Christ, these Sundays after Easter, between Easter and the Ascension of our Lord, contain this beautiful theme of the love of our Lord in laying down his life for us. And today we refer to as Good Shepherd Sunday because of the epistle and the gospel, especially the gospel. And it seems to me to be a sort of second feast of the sacred heart of Jesus. For we think of the title of our Lord, the Good Shepherd, the Good Shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. And the love of our Lord, the compassion, the gentleness, and again, his deep interest in the welfare of his children, of his sheep. So we think of the love of the Sacred Heart. But this feast also should remind us of the church founded by our Lord. He speaks about his sheep fold, his fold. And that, of course, is a wonderful symbol of the Catholic Church. And what a gratitude we ought to have to the goodness of God that we have been called to and are members of this sheepfold, this church of our Lord. Because outside that sheepfold, there is danger, there is darkness, there is confusion, there is error. But in that sheepfold, under the Good Shepherd, there is security. And there is a safe path to the salvation of our immortal souls. Our Lord indicates in this gospel the uh, qualities, we might say, of his church. For instance, he speaks about other sheep. Other sheep I have that are not of this fold. Them also I must bring. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. So in that statement, we see the apostolic nature of our Lord's church to spread the faith throughout the world, calling to mind those other words of our Lord to his apostles, go forth and teach all nations, all things, whatever I have commanded you. So the Catholic church is apostolic, seeks to spread the truth, to bring as many souls as possible into the fold of the Good Shepherd. We also see our Lord speaking about the first of the four marks of the church. There shall be one fold and one shepherd. And we recall that catechism lesson on the four marks of the church, that the true church of our Lord is one holy, Catholic, and apostolic. It is one because throughout the world, the priests of that church and bishops teach the same faith and the faithful hold to the same doctrines throughout the world. And there is a beautiful mark of unity also in, you might say, what is sometimes referred to as a social unity. That is the bonds that unite the members of the church, even throughout the world with others whose language we do not speak. And yet we share the same faith. So there's that beautiful mark of unity. The Catholic Church is also holy because it has the doctrines which, if lived, lead to a holy life. It has the means of grace, the sacraments. It was founded by the All Holies, the Son of God, the Holy of Holies, and it has given holy members to every age. We rejoice to reflect upon, to learn the lives of the saints who are, so to speak, our elder brothers and sisters in Christ, the saints who have gone before us and lived holy lives. And we invoke their intercession. We strive to imitate them. And we rejoice in that heritage that we have from the saints. So we see that the Church of Christ is holy even though there is no guarantee that every Catholic is living a holy life. In fact, sadly, the church has had in its fold many members down through the ages who have not given a good example to their neighbor, have not lived up to their calling. But that does not detract from the holiness of the church herself, even though she has, again, unworthy members. The Catholic Church is also Catholic 
or universal. It is for all nations of all times, of all places throughout the world, for all men who wish to join it. And the Catholic Church is apostolic because it was founded upon the apostles, the first bishops. It traces its history all the way back to the 12 apostles. And it also has that apostolic spirit of spreading the faith to all men. So these are what we learned, the four marks of the church. The church also has certain attributes, especially infallibility and indefectibility. The last words of our Lord, before he ascended into heaven to his apostles, he blessed them and said, Behold, I am with you all days, even to the consummation of the world. The last words he spoke before his ascension into heaven. So we have our Lord with us. He is with us in the Blessed Sacrament, but he also is in his church. And he gave that promise that the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. This does not mean that there would not be storms, that there would not be a loss of faith. And there have been many times in the history of the church. We can go back to, for example, the Arian heresy or the Reformation, the Protestant Reformation, or so many other times when large numbers abandoned their faith, separated themselves from the church, and so forth. And we know that the devil has always sought to destroy the faith of the members of the church, to cause division. And we have seen that especially in our own days with modernism infiltrating even into the clergy and into the church and how many souls have fallen away, no longer hold the same faith that we hold, that we have received from our forefathers, that has been passed down from the time of Christ unto our own day. But we should rejoice that we are members of this sheepfold, that we are not outside in the darkness and the confusion. We should value our membership in the church. The Catechism tells us, what is the church? It's that union of all the faithful all over the world who have been baptized, who share the same faith. We have the same Mass, the same sacraments. We all adhere to the authority, the lawful authority of the church. And we find ourselves at a time when we pray for a return of that visible authority that we can hold on to. But we adhere to what the church has taught down through the centuries. And what a joy it is to be a member of Christ's church, to be a member of his sheepfold, to be one of the sheep that follow his voice. They shall hear my voice, he says. And how do we hear his voice? By listening to the voice of his representatives. We read and study the encyclicals written by the popes, the teachings of the councils, the church, down through the ages. And we know that in that faith, we have security. Let us not allow all of the turmoil, the tribulation that the church has experienced throughout history and especially experiences today to cause us in any way to waver in our faith. Sadly, there have been so many Catholics, former Catholics, I should say, baptized, raised Catholics, who have abandoned their faith. And they use sometimes as an excuse so many other members of the church not living their faith. And that has caused them to, again, just abandon their faith. What a terrible tragedy. But what a joy it is to be a member of the church, to live our faith to be grateful to Almighty God for our faith. So on this Feast of the Good Shepherd, or this Sunday that is called Good Shepherd Sunday, let us reflect upon the blessings we have in the church. We are members of the church, children of our Holy Mother, the church. And we call the church a mother for a good reason. Because just as a loving mother provides for her children, has care for her children, so the church loves us, provides for us, gives us the sacraments, again, the doctrines of the faith. Let us appreciate 
this membership in the church and safeguard that membership, not endanger it by giving into curiosity, reading non-Catholic material, reading anything that could undermine our faith, but to remain far away from all dangers and to nurture our faith by good Catholic reading, by our prayer life, by the devout reception of the sacraments, and never to forget what a joy it is, what a blessing it is, to be counted in the sheepfold of Christ, to look upon him as our good shepherd, to hear his voice and follow the teachings of his church, because it is only in that sheepfold that we can find the guarantee, if we live our faith, of our eternal salvation, of our union with him in heaven one day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.